Hello everyone, this is Square Triangle Mouse and today we are going to record a video about uh, city-states which are the best city-states in the game for you to be suzerain of especially for higher difficulties although this will actually be useful for any game you are playing really and uh, this uh, video is going to include the city-states from Rise and Fall and the city-states from the DLCs, okay, so all the city-states that you have available at the time in which uh, this video has been published. Um, by the way, I'm showing you this weird game in which I did domination with Mongolia and uh, Stockholm, I think at some point the AI invaded so Stockholm and they built the Great Lighthouse here and then I liberated Stockholm, so now a city-state uh, has a wonder uh, they have the great lighthouse which is pretty fun if you ask me and uh, I liberated Stockholm because it's a pretty good city-state to have so let's um, let's go to the Civilopedia and let's go to all of the city-states and we are going to go really in the order that the game is putting them here in the introduction actually you know what I'm going to zoom out because we were hearing a lot of noises from Stockholm there and we don't really need all of that noise so let's just go back here go to city-states and start reading okay so we're going to be focusing um, on a suzerain bonus now obviously if you um, are going for cultural victories you will want more extra culture or maybe you didn't have time to build a lot of theater squares and you want uh, the ones you have to be super powerful so you want to put six envoys here that's fine I'll, as long as you have you know time for museums um, but anyway you know this is the same for every cultural city and every industrial one gives you production the militaristic ones give you production for units so that is the same for every city of its kind I'm not going to stop there a lot of time I will focus on the suzerain bonus so Antananarivo, your civilization gets plus 2% culture for each great person he has ever earned. So once again, if you're going for a cultural victory, this is nice, because on a cultural victory you're probably going to be getting a lot of great people. You want to get all of the great artists and uh, great writers that you can get. And so, you know, if, if you have, let's say, five great people, that's already a plus 10%. If uh, you manage to get... 10 great people in a game which is totally doable you can get an extra 20% culture uh, which is going to be a huge cultural output so it's not too bad I would not say this is a game winner mm, or at all really you can get a lot of culture either way uh, if you play your game right but it's, it's a nice a nice extra to have it's not completely useless we have Kumasi here. Your trade routes 20 city state provide plus 2 culture and plus 1 gold for every specialty district in the origin city. Now, the origin city you will try to use here a good city that has maybe 4 districts at least. So that's going to be plus 8 culture and plus 4 gold if you send a trade route to a city state. But the thing is, most of the time you don't want to send trade routes to city states. I usually do that only for free envoys. Uh, when, when the quest of the city-state is that they want a, a trade route and that's it usually your international trade routes you usually prefer to send them to um, to the AI to the cities of your rivals because they will give you extra tourism if you're going for cultural victory they will give you a diplomacy bonus they will give you alliance uh, points so you probably don't want to send your trade routes to city-states and that's why I think Kumasi is not a good city-state to be the suzerain of. Now let's go to Mohenjo Daro. Your cities have full housing from water as if they were all next to a river. Now the thing is, uh, the way I play the game I always build my cities next to rivers or next to lakes basically uh, so that they have fresh water. Um, if not, I build them next to coast, so at least I have some housing and the ones that are next to coast usually have a granary and uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe an encampment for extra housing. Uh, I usually don't build aqueducts, but 
maybe I could exceptionally if I really need housing or even a neighborhood if I really really need housing um, so this is not going to be necessary for most of my cities the extra housing I pretty much never find that my problem in the game is that I don't have enough housing so again Mohen Hodaro not my favorite at all I will also skip this one Nan Madol your districts are on or next to ghost tiles provide plus two culture um okay if you're playing an archipelago map this is probably a nice thing to have because you're probably going to be having a lot of districts next to coasts like uh, you're going to be having harbors in probably all of your cities or almost all of them and you know a bunch of your land districts will be next to coasts simply because you're playing an archipelago map However, if you are not playing an archipelago map, this will not be so good. So I will go for I would go for Narbadol only if I'm playing an archipelago map. And finally we have Vilnius. And Vilnius gives us uh, for the highest active alliance level, all your theater square districts receive plus 50% adjacency bonus. Uh, this is pretty much rubbish. Honestly, um, I don't. I can't imagine ever going for this. So yeah, the cultural ones pretty disappointing, except maybe for Antananarivo because if you're going for a cultural victory, you will probably want to get a lot of great people. So that's that's not too bad. So let's go with the industrial ones. Auckland, Suzerain bonus, shallow water tiles. You own provide plus one production, additional plus one when you reach the industrial era. So, yeah, not bad, not bad, especially for island maps, uh, as we said before. But, um, yeah, it's like, like shallow water. I mean, what are we talking about here? I, I'm not sure what the, ma the game exactly means by shallow water. Uh, but it looks like something that is really only good for, for a lot of coastal cities. So again, probably something that you want to use only in archipelago maps. Brussels. So Brussels, your cities get plus 15% production towards wonders. And the thing is, um, if you play on high difficulties, you're probably not going to have time to play, uh, to build, sorry, a lot of wonders, especially on DD or, or maybe even mortal. You will probably be conquering wonders, but not building many of them. If you play on lower levels, I imagine Brussels might be a lot of fun because you will be building a lot of wonders. But on higher levels, uh, I don't normally go for it. Buenos Aires. Now this is one of the <laughs> the nice ones. Your bonus resources behave like luxury resources, providing one amenity per type. So this is this is freaking awesome. Okay, like. Let's see, uh, these are uh, resources, okay, here we have it. So these are the luxuries, okay, in this case I'm going for domination, I conquered a lot of land, okay. So I have a lot of luxuries, but even here I also have a bunch of strategic resources uh, and, and bonus resources. And so all of the bonus resources give you the same bonus, let's go again to Buenos Aires just to read that properly, okay. So um, all of the bonus resources behave as extra luxuries which means you have the luxuries you have here and a bunch more okay this is a lot of extra luxuries and uh, maybe if you have a smaller empire you don't have so many of them but then again you won't also have so many luxuries because you're not going for domination you're not taking everybody else everyone else's luxuries so you maybe you have four or five luxuries maybe six and maybe another four bonus resources or five and, and that means that you're going to be doubling the amount of uh, uh, luxuries you have on any game and that's just awesome okay so uh, if you can get Buenos Aires if you have a realistic chance of being the suzerain of Buenos Aires I would say that it's a high priority in, in pretty much any game it, it really doesn't matter uh, which sorry it really doesn't matter which type of victory you are going for Buenos Aires is always useful so yeah one of my top city-states uh, 
for uh, for trying to to be a suitor enough. Seriously, this is a very very good bonus. Hong Kong. Uh, so Hong Kong gives us uh, plus twenty percent production towards city projects in every city. Um, the thing is, city projects. I mean, you're going to be building a few of them when you really want to get a great person, uh, and that's about it. Uh, on a normal game, you're not going to be building a lot of city projects. So I don't see this as an awesome sorcery bonus. It's not terrible, but it's not really great. Toronto. Toronto is an awesome one, especially for large empires, because regional effects from your industrial zone and entertainment complex districts reach three tiles farther. That means that maybe a zoo, instead of uh, reaching uh, cities six tiles farther, they reach nine tiles farther, so the one zoo will probably be affecting two more cities, maybe even three more cities, and that, that can be pretty great. Same thing with factories and and power plants they will be affecting two or more cities per, per building that means you don't build, need to build so many of them uh, that will save you a lot of production so i think especially if you're going for like um, for domination when you want to use your production for units uh, this is pretty good because you don't have to be building so many factories and so many zoos uh, to keep production up and to keep your cities happy. So I really like Toronto. I think together with Buenos Aires is one of my favorites in this game. Now uh, let's go to the militaristic ones. So um, this one also gives you extra production but for, for units instead of, um, instead of buildings. Uh, either way, um, the suzerain bonus of Carthage land combat units are 20% cheaper to purchase with gold for each incumbent district uh, building in that city. So uh, if you have uh, the barracks, you have 20% cheaper. If you have barracks and armory, you have like 40%. And then if you have the military academy, then they are 60% cheaper to purchase with gold. Now the problem is, if you're going for domination, if you're playing well, you're going to have a lot of money anyway. So gold is not going to be scarce, and your the, the cities that you are going to be using for producing units are going to have a lot of uh, unit production bonus anyway, because we are probably going to have some envoys in uh, military militaristic city states, and you are going probably to be having barracks or stuff like that to get more production for units. So you probably won't need to purchase a lot of units, and if you need to purchase them, you are going to be having a lot of gold per turn. Um, so, I don't see this as something so good, really. I mean, if if, I, if you go for domination, you don't need it, and if you don't go for domination, then why could you be wanting to, to purchase units, you know? Um, Granada, your builders can now make Alcazar improvements. So, we, we need to go for the Alcazar improvement. Uh, let me remember... Where the hell was... Where are the improvements? Here. Alcazar. So the Alcazar gives you plus two culture. Occupying units receive plus four defense and gain two turns of fortification, but you cannot have two of them put together. Uh, this is not great. This is not great at all. I usually prefer to use land for mines or farms or districts. I, I don't do a lot of these unique improvements. And uh, even if I build them, it's, it's with specific civilizations that can really use them, like the step well in India. I mean, this is not a very good land improvement. I would probably not use it a lot, which means I will probably not use Granada a lot. Okay, I, I don't really need Alcazar, uh, to build Alcazars usually in my games. Next one is Kabul. Your units receive double experience for battles they initiate. And this can be nice, um, especially if you manage to get this one uh, in the first, I don't know, 100 turns or so. If you manage to be suzerain of Kabul early on in the game and uh, you are going for domination. In, if, if those two things come at the same time, so you meet Kabul very early, uh, you can be suzerain early and you are going for domination, then this can be nice because you are going to be getting a lot of experience from, from very early in the game, so you are going to be getting promotions a lot earlier than you normally would, and that's going to make your domination game easier. But of course, 
uh, you need to have Kabul next to you. Uh, so, because getting this like late game or mid late game, like turn 150, turn 200 especially, you don't need this on turn 200. You are you're going to be close to victory anyway. So, mm, you, you can be good if you meet Kabul really early. Press love. You receive plus two loyalty per turn in cities for each encampment district building. The thing is, if you play the game well, loyalty should not be an issue for you. Okay, a loyalty. Once you realize how to deal with loyalty in Rise and Fall, uh, it should be easy to to keep at bay. Okay, if you move your governors properly, if you know when to conquer, if you manage your era score properly, you shouldn't be having a lot of loyalty problems. And uh, when where are you going to be having loyalty problems if you have them? It's going to be on border cities. Uh, so maybe if you're conquering, you manage to conquer a border city that has an encampment, and that encampment has buildings, and in that particular case, then Preslav is going to be useful. Like, if you're conquering another civilization that has a lot of encampments, maybe, yeah, you get the extra loyalty the moment you conquer them. Okay, fine, it's not bad. Uh, but uh, uh, it's not a game-winning kind of thing. So... I don't know, it's not completely useless, but, but I wouldn't prioritize it. Valletta. City center buildings and encampment district buildings can be bought with faith. Cost of purchasing ancient, medieval, and renaissance walls is reduced. Well, that's that's uh, useless because you probably won't be purchasing any walls. Um, and they can only be bought with faith. Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, the, the nice thing here could be uh, building districts and so on with faith. Now, what's the problem with this in theory, right? In theory, you are going to be generating a lot of faith only if you go for religious victories, and then in that case, you are not going to be wasting those faith points in buildings because you will be using them for missionaries and apostles and all of that stuff. So, when are you going to actually be using this? Well, let's say you're going for domination, and then you conquer a neighbor, and that neighbor had a lot of holy sites, right? Like, you conquer five cities, and the five cities have holy sites, and suddenly you start producing a lot of faith. But you're going for domination, you don't need your those faith points. So, okay, maybe purchasing incumbent district buildings with faith can be nice in that context. Sure, why not? Uh, but it's a, a very specific situation, so if you are in that very specific situation that you are going for domination and you just happen to have a lot of faith because you have conquered a lot of holy sites, well, it's nice to be able to use that faith for, for something that is actually useful for you. But, uh, you know, you can always use the faith to, I don't know, purchase great people or whatever, so it's not like you won't find the use for faith if you don't have Valletta, you know what I mean? So. Not, not a great city. In general, these militaristic ones, uh, they are not great, except maybe Kabul, if you find it uh, in the early game. Otherwise, like if you're not going for domination, even if you have Kabul early game, just conquer it. You, you can just conquer any of these ones. I, I wouldn't go for them. Religious. You have Armag. So, Armag, um, suzerain bonus, your builders can now make monas monastery. So let's see, monasteries, uh, monastery improvement, where is it? Here. Plus two phase, plus five HP healing for friendly religious units on this tile that has not attack this turn, cannot be built next to another monastery. Uh, sure, I mean, if you're going for a religious victory, I guess you might want to build uh, a few of these. It's not an awful improvement if you're going for a religious victory. Um, so I guess this is not completely terrible, uh, but it's not uh, great. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, average, not terrible, just not completely great. We have other religious bonuses that are better, I think. So Jerusalem, your cities with holy sites exert, exert pressure as if they were uh, holy cities, like for ex religious pressure on all cities within 10 tiles. So, this is a lot nicer, for example. If you're going for a religious victory, this is a lot of religious pressure that you are going to be generating in every city that has a holy site. And if you're going for religious victory, that's going to be every city. So, yeah, this is, this is pretty nice. I like it. I, I think it's. Uh, 
if you see Jerusalem uh, and you're going for a religious victory, you probably want to be a uh, suzerain of them. Candy, receive a relic every time you discover a new natural wonder and earn plus 50% faith from all relics. Uh, okay, like if you can be suzerain of Candy at the very early game, then you're going to be f discovering a lot of natural wonders, like two or three, maybe four if you're super lucky. And that is like three or four new relics. And also plus 50% faith from all relics. But even with, with these, you're, you're not going to be having a lot of them. So 50% more faith from them is not going to be a lot of faith points. Uh, in general, this is rather underwhelming. Uh, pff, I wouldn't bother with candy. Laventa, your builders can now make colossal head improvements. Man, so many new improvements with Rise and Fall and the DLCs and all of that stuff. I forgot about that. So anyway, Colossal Head gives you plus two faith, plus one faith for every two adjacent rainforest, um, plus one faith for every two adjacent goods. Cannot be built on snow or snow hills. So what is the thing with this? Okay, plus two faith uh, to begin with, and then something extra if you have like two adjacent rainforests or, or goods. Goods, you're probably going to be chopping them, except if they are next to a river and you want to build a number mill. A rainforest, you're probably going to be chopping them unless they have bananas. So all in all, you're not going to be keeping a lot of that, so you're not going to be having a lot of extra from this. And uh, plus two, maybe with another one of these, if you have two adjacent rainforests with bananas, and that's going to be three faith points per turn, which is not a lot. So let's go back to La Venta. I mean, okay, sure, it's not awful to be able to, to build colossal heads, same thing as Armag, you know, with this monastery. They're not awful improvements if you're going for a religious big tree, but they are not great. Okay. Now, of course, if you're not going for religious victory, none of these bonuses are good. So they're they're pretty specific. And then you have Yerevan, and uh, Yerevan is is the best one if you're going for religious victory. Okay, this is, in my opinion, even better than Jerusalem. This is uh, hands down the best one for religious victories. Your apostle units can choose from any possible promotion instead of receiving a random promotion. And that's the thing, the um, promotions from uh, for apostles, uh, some of them are very good, some of them are terrible. So if you can pick them, you get a huge advantage. And uh, so I always, if I see Yerevan and I'm going for a religious victory, I always try to be suzerain. There is no reason really to not prioritize this one. If you don't have Yerevan and you're going for religious victory, your second priority could be Jerusalem. So that's, that's another excellent choice. The other ones, well, uh, whatever. Lavent and Armag, not terrible. Candy is kind of rubbish. Uh, but if you're going for a religious uh, victory, I mean, even if you see Candy, maybe you don't want to be suzerain because this is almost nothing. But you are going to still put six envoys here to have the extra faith, because you need a lot of faith to win uh, religion. Anyway, scientific ones. So obviously you will want the extra science if you're going for a scientific victory. Uh, let's now focus on the suzerain bonuses. Babylon, plus two science. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Babylon right now, at least uh, with the first expansion, Rise and Fall, Babylon is still not a playable civilization in Civilization VI, which is quite rare. Uh, Babylon is uh, a playable civilization in almost all of the civilization games. Anyway, mm, suzerain bonus, plus two science from each great work of writing, plus one science from each relic and uh, artifact. Uh, the problem with this is uh, you're going to be having a lot of great works of writing and a lot of artifacts if you're going for a cultural victory. If you're not going for a cultural victory, you may not get so many works of writing uh, and uh, so many artifacts. So you are not going to be getting a lot of extra science from this. So all in all, this is not such a great thing. It's not completely awful because, you know, you are going to be building some theater squares to get your culture points up, even if you're going for, for a scientific big tree. So you might get a few works of writing here and there. Uh, and maybe late game, you might be uh, uncovering a few artifacts but uh, that point uh, is going to be so late in the game that this is not going to be making a difference, you know. So yeah, not, not great. Not completely useless, but definitely not a great one. 
Geneva, your city center plus 50% science whenever you are not at war with any civilization. Now, if you are playing the, the type of science victory in which you don't want to conquer the whole world, that would be, you know, your usual science victory in Civilization 6, when you are going for maybe 12 cities, that, that is a nice number, 12 cities. With 12 cities you can win um, science or culture uh, pretty easily in this game. And uh, if you go for that kind of game after you conquer the necessary cities to have a total of 12, that's going to be it. You probably don't want to go to war anymore. And that's probably going to be happening at some point in the mid-game. Uh, so it's a very nice city to have because that means the second half of the game pretty much. You're going to be getting a, an extra 50% science and because you're going to be generating a lot of science if you go for a scientific victory, 15% is actually going to be a lot and uh, it's going to create a nice difference. So I like Geneva. I like Geneva when you're going for science victories. Obviously, if you're going for cultural victories, this is not a great thing. And if you're going for domination, obviously, you're not going to be at peace for <laughs> uh, very long. If you're going even for religious victories, you're going to be having a lot of wars. So this is very good for scientific victories, not so good for anything else. Hatusa provides you with uh, one of each strategic, strategic, sorry, strategic resource you have revealed, but do not own. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, let's say you're going for domination, right? And suddenly it happens that uh, even though you conquer some land, uh, I don't know, you have, uh, you don't have iron or you don't have horses, or, or later in the game you don't have oil, although that would be weird because later in the game you will have conquered a lot of land. But it could happen, in theory, or, or you don't have uh, coal or something like that. And you want to build the units, okay? Well, with one strategic resource, if, if you have uh, an encampment, you can build a unit. Or the, the sea unit if you have a harbor. So, um, it's nice to have, to have the city in that particular situation. The thing is, because you're going to be conquering so much land in a domination game, by the time you reach mid-game or, or, you know, turn 170 or so, you're going to be having all of the resources that you need because you're going to be having a lot of land. So this becomes pretty much useless. Um, and it's not so easy to be suzerain of a city-state in the early game, especially on higher difficulties. So it's going to be valuable, if it's valuable, it's going to be valuable for a very short period of time. So I could not prioritize it. Palenque. City growth rate is 15% higher in cities with a campus district. Okay, I mean, sure, uh, you get uh, some, some extra population in your scientific games, which is, or, or you get the population a little bit faster, which is always nice because you can build your districts when you have three more population, you can get a new district, that's nice. So, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I mean, you're going to be having campuses in, in lots of cities. So, it's not a bad thing to have. It's just not super awesome. It's good. It's, uh, I would say, a little bit better than, than average. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit better than Babylon. But uh, not, not like super awesome. And then you have Stockholm. And Stockholm, oh, what a nice city. What a nice city. Your districts with the building provide plus one great person point of their type. And this includes in case of uh, theater squares, great writer greatest, and great musician points for theater squares. So this is not only good, I mean, if you go for a scientific victory, obviously this is going to be giving you more great scientist points. Um, it's going to give, you, to give you more great engineer points, which you also need for scientific victories. And if you're going for a cultural victory, it's going to give you more great artist points, great writer points, great musician points. So Stockholm is even good for cultural victories. Um, so yeah, pretty good. I mean, even if you're going for domination, I guess it, it will give you more great generals. Uh, that, that one, although it's not so necessary, I mean, I find that I don't really need great generals in single player uh, to beat the AI. But uh, still, you know, it's a city, it's a city state that uh, is good for everything except maybe religious victories. 
but even then, I mean, it's always good to have more great people, you know? <laughs> I cannot think of a situation in which I would not want more great people points. So, Stockholm is one of my favorite city-states in this game. Uh, definitely my favorite uh, scientific one, even above Geneva. And it's right there with, uh, with Toronto and right there with Buenos Aires as one of my favorites. I think maybe Stockholm and, and Buenos Aires might be my two favorite ones because they are, they are good for pretty much every game, which is rare. You know, s most city-states are sort of specialized. And these two ones, they, they always uh, give you something good. So yeah, um, let's go to the commercial ones. So you're going to be getting some extra money, which is nice. But um, if you play well, gold should not be a huge problem for you anyway. So uh, the suzerain bonus of Antioch. Your trade routes to foreign cities earn plus one gold for each luxury resource at the destination. Um, you are going to be sending a lot of traders to foreign cities, but uh, you never know which ones have the luxuries and, and it's rare to see a foreign city that has, let's say, two or three luxuries in just one city. Uh, so this doesn't seem like a lot. It's, it's not too bad, it's just not a lot, so I guess we could uh, qualify Antioch as average. Bandar Brunei. Your trading posts in foreign cities provide plus one gold to your trade routes passing through or going to the city. And again, this is nice. This is nice because we are going to be sending trade routes to foreign cities. I think this could be maybe a little bit better than Antioch because if you have a trading post in a city, uh, sorry, in a foreign city that is close to your border, maybe a lot of your other trade routes will pass through that that city. And then several of your traders will be getting benefit from this, which uh, I don't know can be nice. But again, it, you need the right circumstances, you know, the right map for this to be really good. So yeah, uh, normally it's just average. It's okay. It's not awful. Just I, I wouldn't uh, lose my shit over uh, being the suzerain of Bandar Brunei. Lisbon. Your trader units are immune to being plundered on water tiles, so if you are going for, let's say, domination on an archipelago map, this is really strong, uh, because you are going to be at war a lot, but you don't want to lose your traders because of that. Uh, so yeah, if you are playing archipelago and uh, you are going for domination, this is uh, really strong. Otherwise, well, an archipelago in general, I guess, if you get it during the early game, it's also pretty good because you're going to be having barbarians uh, until the mid game, probably an archipelago map, because there's going to be a lot of land that will not be found until late in the game. So there are going to be barbarians for quite some time. And so, yeah, in archipelago maps, I guess, in general, this is good. But if you're not playing an archipelago map, Lisbon is not doing much for you. So it's very specific to archipelago maps. Muscat, plus one amenity in cities with a commercial hub district. Uh, this is nice. This is nice because especially, uh, this is actually the opposite of Lisbon, okay? Like if you're playing archipelago map, you won't have a lot of commercial hubs because most of your trade routes will come from harbors, okay? But if you're not playing archipelago, if there is a lot of land, like this map here, we have a lot of land, most of your traders will come from commercial hubs, so you will have a lot of commercial hubs. Like, let's say you have 12 cities in a, in a continent's map, maybe you have 10 commercial hubs, so that is quite a lot, and this can be there for quite a lot of uh, extra amenities. And uh, it's never bad to have extra amenities in this game, it's never bad at all. So I like it, I say Muscat is, is quite good. Not the, one of the best city states in the game, but but a really good one. I would put it. Uh, I don't know if to maybe top five, maybe top five, uh, at least top ten for sure. It's, it's a very good city state. Uh, as I said, unless you are playing archipelago, and then you will not will not have a lot of commercial hubs, and so this will not be so useful. Zanzibar. Finally, we have the suzerain bonus of Zanzibar. Receive the cinnamon and cloves, um, cinnamon and cloves luxury resources. 
This cannot be earned by any other way in the game and provides six amenities each. So instead of the usual four, you get six amenities each. Having two extra luxuries is never a bad thing. And two extra luxuries are stronger than usual. Uh, that is even better. So San Siever may be the best uh, commercial city in the game simply because this is good in any game you're playing just like buenos aires you know but buenos aires gives you even more than this uh, but it has the same idea as buenos aires uh, disregarded the map disregarding the type of game you're always going to be having more amenities and that is always good okay because you don't want to be building a lot of entertainment complexes in this game that's an extra district that uh, limits your uh, possibilities of, of building more important districts you know the campus is more important the industrial zone is more important the theater square is more important so you don't want to be building a lot of entertainment complexes um, you don't want to be wasting production in building you know a lot of zoos um, that's why you want to in, in my wonders guide I mentioned all that the Colosseum is an awesome wonder because it, it solves your amenity issues for most of the game and these kind of city states that give you more amenities, they are also great. Okay, so San Cibar and Buenos Aires, very good city states. And uh, yeah, maybe San Cibar could could make the top three together with Stockholm and Buenos Aires. That that could be could be an option. It's definitely a little bit worse than those two, but it's maybe right after them. You know, then Toronto is also there, pretty good city state, Toronto. And maybe after those ones we get Muscat maybe depends on the map of course unless of course you're going for religious victory in which case Yerevan is super awesome this is just great for religious victories and and yeah if you're going for a pacifist game in which you want to win a scientific victory I guess Geneva is super awesome so as I said before you know you have a lot of city states that city states that are very good in specific situations but Buenos Aires and San Zeeber and even Stockholm, they are good in every situation. Okay, Toronto, that's also good in pretty much all of your games. You are usually going to be having enough land for Toronto to be really good with that extra reach that that is giving you. So those are the main ones for me. If you think I was wrong, if you think there is a city say that I said is really bad and you think it's really good, uh, tell me in the comments. Uh, but my general thought here is that I prefer city states that are always good as opposed to city states that are only good in specific situations because you never control which city states you are going to get so you need to be really lucky to get, get a, a city state that is good for a specific situation right in that particular situation like to get Kabul when you are going to go for domination and to get it really close to you so you can be suzerain in the early game you know that's like super specific so it's going to be really hard for you to get it and uh, and that's it that's it for city states i hope you have enjoyed this video we go with another view as stockholm with that uh, weird uh, great lighthouse right there and uh, tell me guys in the comments which other strategic uh, guides you want to see especially for higher difficulties including rise and fall and including dlcs and i will see you guys on the next video thank you for watching